In this video, we review the Grounded Brewing Technologies 240 volt brew in a bag control panel, and that's coming up next. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see product reviews and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click the bell so you won't miss anything. Full disclosure, Grounded Brewing Technology sent this unit to me. I did not purchase it. They have done a great deal and hooked us up with a special offer for Short Circuit of Brewer viewers. And that is if you put in the coupon code SCB10, and I'll put it down here in the uh, video below, you can get 10% off of this unit in their store. So thank you very much to Grounded Brewing Technologies for hooking us up with that coupon code. We certainly appreciate it. So let's take a look at the unit. It comes with a key switch for on off. It has a Omron PID, and it has an element switch and light. Along with that, it does have a pump switch, as well as a timer with an alarm inside of the unit. On the bottom, you have all of the outlet ports. There is a pump outlet, an element outlet, and then there's also a 240 volt inlet. All of those are twist lock. And then you have your connector for the temperature probe. The temperature probe that the unit comes with is a half inch NPT RTD PT100 probe and it does have something a little bit unique that's different from some of the other systems out there. It uses a four wire plug or four wire uh, connection wire for the probe. So just a note on that if you want to if you already have a probe and you want to try to hook the system up to there you might have a little bit of issue with that but it does come with the probe. Now my system that I have, I ha you generally use weldless in these type of systems but because of the way this system is designed I had to actually create a T with a nipple and a couple of connectors on it in order to use it with my system. So basically what will happen is I'll have the RTD probe in the flow going back into the kettle and that's how I'll deal with the probe connection with this system. The pump I'm using is a DC pump and it has a power pack on it. One of the things that I had to do with that in order to adapt it over to the twist lock is I had to do a uh, use the twist lock adapter that I had made previously and I'll put a link up in the uh, top up here as well as in the description down below for you to see how to make one of those if you have a system where you're using that 12 volt pump. Otherwise you can use any other pump, you know, the, the Riptide pump, March Chugger pump, which, whatever you want to use. So this unit will effectively handle up to a 5500 watt element and that's what I've got installed here. This system that I'm working on currently is based around a Bayou Classic 1144 kettle system and it has a basket and it is an 11 gallon kettle. So I was able to get the element installed, the 5500 watt element installed by using a little bit of an extension. So let's jump into the performance and this is where you're really going to see the difference between the 120 volt and the 240 volt systems is whenever you get into heat times ramping up for temperatures and that sort of thing. It's definitely, you're going to see the benefit of the 240 volts. So let's take a look. Straight out of the box, the system comes set up for manual mode so that you could just take it right out of the box and start doing boiling. I wanted to see how long it would take to heat up to a certain temperature. So I actually switched over into the uh, PID mode or the automatic mode. And that's very simple. All you do is just hit the PF button on the front of the controller until it switches over to a auto mode. And then you can set your temperature accordingly. I set it to 167 degrees, started a timer, and let the system begin heating up. Once it got to about 150-ish degrees, it started to cycle the PID as if it was trying to not overshoot the temperature. Knowing that it wasn't auto-tuned, I went ahead and set the auto-tune up so that it would begin the auto-tune process. The auto-tuning is fairly easy. All you're going to do is you're going to press the square button until you see the display change. And then you'll hit the circular arrow button until you see AT off. And then you're going to use the up arrow to change it to AT minus two. Hit the square button again, and that will begin the auto-tune process. Now my system, I started at about 155 degrees and the set point was 167. So it did ramp up quite a ways past. I think it was about 170, 71 degrees, something like that past the, on, on where it got to. And uh, once it got there, my kettle that I'm using is very insulated, so it took a long time for it to fall back down, and then it heated back up, fell back down. All in all, with the kettle system that I have, the way it's uh, insulated and everything, it took a while for it to ramp up and down. So it took probably 30, 45 minutes 
for it to go through that auto-tune cycle. If your kettle is not as insulated as what mine is, it certainly is going to, you know, it's, it's probably take a little bit less time than that. But because mine was so insulated, it did take a little bit of time. Now, once I got everything up to the 167 degrees and the auto-tune went fine, um, I went ahead and switched it over to manual mode to simulate going from ramp out temperature of 168, 170 up to boil. And it took about eight to 10 minutes for it to get up to boil, as you'll see there. And uh, that's one of the things about the 240 volt system that's really advantageous is you can really shorten your brew day by the amount of time it takes to heat the, the water and then the time it takes to go from, you know, ramp out to boil. So that is one of the definite benefits of a 240 volt system. One thing to note also is that the boil volume, I left it at the seven gallons that I started with. So if you, once you do your sparge and all that and you wind up with, you know, your six gallons, it's probably gonna heat up even faster than that. Um, a 5,500 watt element is probably a little bit overkill for a system that size, but I use it for my larger kettle and, and you know, the purpose of it was to be able to port it over to that smaller kettle as well. So I don't see any problem with having a little bit of overkill on that part of it. But uh, um, so what do I like about the system? Uh, I do like the fact that uh, it is very easy to auto tune. It's very easy to switch it from manual mode to uh, automa automatic mode. And uh, the timer is okay. Uh, I don't really use timers a lot with any of the systems that I've ever tested uh, before. I typically use the Beersmith app and that's how I use my timers. But it's, it's really easy with the timer. You can eat, you want, the only thing you really wanna worry about with it is setting it to where it'll count up or count down. And that's very simple to do as well. It, it comes with instructions in the manual for that. Other than that, I mean, every, it performed exactly as I expected that it would. I didn't find any other issues with it at all. Um, it's definitely a nice compact footprint. It does have great mounting points to be able to mount it, you know, either on a stand or on a bench or even on a, a swivel arm like I have in my system. So what do I think they could improve? And some of these things that I believe they've already improved on, on the unit itself is that an external siren would probably be a good idea because it is pretty quiet when the lid is closed. And I believe they've already fixed that issue with the siren on it for the alarm. The other thing that I would like to see is that they would offer a weldless option. I do prefer the weldless option myself for the kettle because when I pulled the hose out of the top of the kettle, the temperature began to drop because it was mounted into the T that I had in the top of the kettle. You can also do another style of mount where you mount it in between the ball valve and the kettle. It does create a little bit extra length when you do that. So I'm not a big fan of that. So that would be one of the things that I, I could see that they might improve on a little bit. But other than that, uh, those couple of things are not a real deal breaker as far as that goes. Um, I think it's a good unit. Stay tuned for further updates on the system that I'm building. It's been a little bit sluggish, but I am still working on getting a few things done and then I will go over the entire system in depth. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate it. We appreciate all the support, all the subscribers. If you do subscribe, don't forget to click that bell so you don't miss any videos. This has been Brian for Short Circuit Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.